Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Learn With Us, where we take YouTube content that is worth your time and we learn from it with you. Speed round. All right. Today, we're venturing into a... The great unknown. The great unknown. Of the, Muji. Of Muji. This this spiritual teacher, I've... I think I've seen like one video with him and I, and I thought it was really cool, but I don't remember it well. It's weird. I feel like I know who he is without, like, I may have watched one video by him as well, but he just looks, he's just got that. Yeah. He's, he's got yeah. the enlightened look. He does. And he his does. smile is just amazing. Certainly, certainly, certainly. And, uh, recently I've been thinking a lot about the idea of ego and this video mm-hmm is him talking about living without ego and i think ego is such an abstract term that so many people use differently depending on who you are Mm -hmm. so i'm fascinated to see where he goes let us begin It's just coming up inside my heart to maybe share something. Because I see that uh, during this time, um, sometimes even from the Sangha also, and people who have been in the spiritual path for some time, uh, panic does come, not as much as we hear generally speaking. I mean, people have concerns and so like that comes. But this one I wanted to talk about just generally speaking. For those of you who have uh, a deep or an increasingly deepening um, attraction to self discovery, um, and uh, I've been asked, you know, like, what is, where are we going to if one becomes increasingly detached from the world, so to speak? And by the world, I'm not talking about the earth. You may have heard me say there's only one earth but there are billions of worlds. And by this, what I mean is a world is is a psychological and emotional and personal um, uh, creation in the mind. And we are largely living in our conditioned uh, mind, uh, leading the way very often. For many people, it is like that. Mm. His voice, his voice will put Whoa. you into a meditative state. <laughs> I just, I just. <laughs> that's what his voice will do to you. Wait a second. That that was a super normal video for me until about ten seconds before you paused it. I just like broke into smile. I. Noticed how nice the nature was around him. I oh, I, I yeah. like how close he is to the camera for yeah. some reason. It feels like like he's about to just reach out and grab my <laughs> face like very gently. I, I I'm not just Were saying you guys this feeling is, this way it's, too. It's not even a joke. I, like I, <laughs> you're just feeling his his energetic whoa, embrace. <laughs> whoa, whoa! I feel like warm. But uh, yeah, man, what were you gonna say? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's Whoa. beautiful. Uh, no, what I was going to say is there are all these different worlds that you live in. And in each of those worlds, you've kind of built up this idea of what you are, hmm. which then is automatically limiting you from experiencing what the actual earth is because you're in your oh. world. Zach Bush, uh, one of our like newest favorite teachers says that you limit yourself immensely by the story you tell about yourself to Mm. yourself and to other people, which, yeah, really, I think goes along with what Muji is saying here. Another illustration could be that, you know, when we go to sleep and you have a dream, your dream is a very unique experience. Even if your most beloved was right next to you, 
and you were having a tremendous dream, there's no way that you could plug in, even if there were, if the, if the technology was available, you couldn't plug in and experience that dream together in the same way that you experience it. Okay? Uh, because our experiencing is subjective and very personal. And why I'm saying this is that our life in the waking state the world is also very personally, subjectively perceived by each one. No? So we have a common misconception that we are all together having the same experience. We often talk like that when we say, you know, but I want to give you this because it's really nice, taste this, it's fantastic. You say, no, but you don't know how it will be uh, uh, experienced by someone else. So we still continue. And that's part of the big field of uh, illusions and delusions that we live in, largely. I think that's a really interesting subconscious thing that a lot of us do. Mm. That we, myself very much included, try, if something's working for us, or we really get excited about something, or we really enjoy something, I think there's this natural desire to share it with everyone and 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 have you know if you really get down to the root of it have other people experience the same thing that you're experiencing but that's not possible and that's something i've been really struggling with because it's like when you're on this more whatever you want to call it self-growth spiritual path you're looking to help yourself learn from others and help other people but how could you help other people without sharing what's helped you? But that might not necessarily help mm. them. So that's where I struggle a bit. I think, I think one, we, we've had a conversation similar to this within the last few days. Mm. But we were talking about how we both naturally feel this like want to uh, like give that experience to someone else or mm. share that. But then often feel... Like when we'll give these ideas or whatever that potentially the other person doesn't do it or something like that. And yeah. it just doesn't seem like they actually care or they're even mm. like taking in what you're saying. But then I, I think it was you who said, um, what if what if rather than trying to think about it as like giving them the experience or whatever, knowing that they're going to come to the experiences when they're ready for them. Mm. And that the best thing you can personally do is to fully accept where they are mm. and give them that space to be where they are. Because yeah. only from that feeling of open acceptance are they going to be explorative. Ooh. And it's like if you're if you're trying to give ideas, the, the people around you aren't going to want to. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just natural that we're like, I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, I've never thought about that before specifically of what state people need to be in to be explorative, mm. which is so important. Like you need curiosity for life. You need that desire for exploration to want to keep growing. So the best thing you can do is foster yeah. that curious feeling in someone. Which is just like, yeah, goes back to just accepting who they are and always encouraging this growth not not forcing it on them but if you see them desiring this this sort of growth you just in, keep encouraging that and then also learn from them so it's like mm. we have something to learn from everyone no matter what type everything. of person every no matter thing. what type of insect we like insects <laughs> and muji and muji <laughs> so when i say uh that we are mm, becoming less and less attached to the worldly mind, um, which behaves sometimes as though it knows the truth. Those who have gone beyond that, or are going beyond, and beyond uh, not beyond that way, but beyond this way, in the inner realization of the truth, um, are discovering something 
tremendous. What the mind can offer to us, all the adventures it can offer, yes, pleasures, but not happiness. You see, it can ask you, you can be offered a sense of resting, but not peace. The peace that I speak about is coming from the truth within you. The more you grasp of your true uh, nature, the more you are living constantly in a field of peace. Yo, I love this guy! I think I'm in love. <laughs> this is like actually the first video I've really recently watched of him. I think this is the first video I've fully given myself to watch. Yeah, and it is fantastic content. It's this. Yo, how about... So the idea of living without ego is the idea of understanding that these worlds you build and that you place yourself in mm. are only worlds you've built and they are not the world that's around you Ooh. like and Ooh. and you're you're never going to get to that you're going to within that world oh man within that world for you maybe there are things that you really like to do Mm -hmm. Let's say let's say you really like food. Yeah. Within that world, you really like food. You really like pizza. Mm -hmm. So when you get pizza, you're gonna have this feeling of of uh, you're gonna have a what was the word he used like a, a positive experience or a pleasure. You're yeah. gonna have a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. But you're not gonna get a maintained happiness because mm -hmm. your pleasure there is purely based on this idea of what you are and what you like. Mm. So you're going to be, you're still going to be locked into whatever this ego that you've constructed thinks is good. You're going to be limited by that for your happiness or your peace. And that's why he's saying you can only touch it until you've moved, let yourself go from that, that world you built because then you're going to be able to have a constant state of peace or mm -hmm. happiness. And then, you know, naturally, because we're just learning about Muji, you think, well, who, you know, the first questions that you would have is like, who is this person to tell me about peace? Yeah. Not in an accusatory way, but that's, I think, an important question to ask. Mm. Destroyed immediately. By what? By just watching a few minutes of him. <laughs> <laughs> this man knows peace. This man knows peace. I have, I have, there's not a question in my mind about this anymore. Mitch has been brainwashed in the last four minutes and 20 seconds. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go find him and I'm going to be his. You're a devotee. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an apprentice. I don't know what's going on to me. And a calm mind. So I just wanted to say today, that uh, sometimes people wonder if you are somehow appearing to be retracting from the world, so to speak. It's not because it's evil and uh, you know you're cynical about it, but that you are discovering a higher way of perceiving inside and coming to the truth of who and what we are internally, not just as body and body mind. But even beyond mind, and people may say, Oh, what do you speak about beyond mind? Mind is all I know. Well, mind is all you. Mind offers a kind of knowledge which is actually not as deep as you think. It is deep only in appearance. For depth, I don't even want to use the word deep. Uh, the truth is not deep, the truth is here. It is just not recognized. And for those who have come to a place of seeing. Uh, what is the life like of one who uh, is dropping personal identity or going beyond transcending the worldly pull that comes from the mind? What is the life like? Well, actually, it's very beautiful. It's beautiful, full of beauty, and 
not fantasy, not projection, beautiful in the sense that one's mind becomes very tranquil, very calm, and uh, peaceful, open, without fear, and uh, loving, loving. Not necessarily loving in the going around, loving in this way. It might include that also, but no, loving in the in the sense that uh, there is the unity of the self, and it's not just personal. We have a sense of a personal self, but you also have a universal self, and your universal self is more true. Uh, we have a personal body. You have a universal body. In a way, you come to see that the whole of this world and universe is also the body of being. I know that might sound very strange right now, but it's such a beautiful discovering. And don't worry, it's not going to just crash in on you. We have to grow into that. And how? Well, the more deeply you want it or desire it, and you have to desire it intensely, to reach this level of completeness. I think enough for the moment. Thank you. Wow, I loved how non-mystical he just made enlightenment. Oh, yeah. Like that he said... What do you mean by mystical? Mystical meaning beyond words. Yes. Is how I would define mysticism. Yes, me as well. Um, so he made the idea of enlightenment. He goes, he didn't even use the word enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. He goes, he goes. What what is a person like who has moved themselves away from that that worldly attachment or that that mm. drive to make build those worlds? Yes. And then he just goes, life is beautiful beauty full full of beauty and it just it just brought me to this feeling of when i've been meditating in the mornings outside yeah and the last few mornings i've been up like around sunrise ish nice. a little bit after yeah but i'll be sitting there and um maybe do like a breath hold exercise or or some like ums whatever it is yeah but then there's this moment of just like stillness of the mind mm -hmm. and all I'm looking at, I'm sitting up on a hillside that's looking at the sunrise oh. and all, all I can really do is just sit and smile. Yes. And it's, it's not like I'm going crazy. It's not like I'm seeing like spirits everywhere. I'm just like, <laughs> I could, I could, I could sit here. <laughs> and it's amazing how feeling that for just a few moments can give you such a spike of joy. Mm. But imagine the ability to experience life at that level. That is some healing. And then you end up looking like this guy. <laughs> then you end up looking like this guy and can give me such a strong response through a computer <laughs> screen what <laughs> well I, I know someone who we're going to be studying more from eh <laughs> fantastic what do you guys think of muji do do any of you maybe some people who really like muji will be watching this and we'd oh, love to hear man. More about maybe your first experiences with this guy. What's your favorite you know? Muji video? Oh, we gotta find these. Yes. Yeah. That was beautiful. More Muji. More Muji. More Muji for sure. <laughs> More Muji, less ego. Yeah, that's man. Right. Yeah, cool. <laughs> now that's, dude, you did, you really did that perfectly there. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. So why don't we just try to bring that energy a bit more into every day you know yeah. just that yeah that enlightenment isn't a complex thing it's simply taking a step back from these worlds you've created Ooh. and taking a step into into the present Ooh.
it's a lot it's a lot the whole thing's a lot simpler than we than we try to make it i came to that a couple days ago and you know just watching someone like muji makes it so obvious yeah that this whole thing that we're all searching for here happiness enlightenment finding the beauty detaching from our our the stories that we tell about ourselves it's a lot simpler than we Mm. the 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 way is a simple path it's not a complex path wow yeah uh thank you for joining us i think uh i think we're all a step closer to enlightenment (laughs) yeah that was beautiful thank you muji yes well folks until next time much love much love Thank you.